Let's recreate this shot in 3D. As usual, I try to do what I can inside Cinema 4D since I'm so much more used to it than any other program, so I created several basic mushroom models in Cinema. Man, doing these videos, I realize how much I use the spline to model stuff. <laughs> I mean, something like these shapes where I can just draw a half cross section and use the lathe tool to make a model of it in one click, it's just so useful. And if I set the spline interpolation to uniform, I get a really uniform spread of polygons and worst case, I manually fix some of the bad topography that usually happens at the center. And then combining that with the volume builder, I mean, now with the new Z remesher algorithm in cinema, I can fix the topology of volume based models in seconds and 9.9 .9 times out of 10 it just works great for what i need so yeah as you can see i use two different volume builder objects using the same cap model and sphere models on both volumes where in one of them they're set to subtract blend to cut out the holes in the cap and in the other they're set to intersect blend to extract shapes that fit inside these holes and then put both volume builders in one volume mesh object then I just did the same exact thing for all the other caps and spheres. In 30 minutes, I had like seven unique mushroom models that would have taken me hours to model or to sculpt. Then I took them to ZBrush where I gave them some details and imperfections. I noticed some mushroom caps have these wrinkles on the edges, so I focused on them. But again, I think I jumped into detail work too quickly and just tried rendering everything first before going in on the details. Luckily, this time I didn't have to redo the details like I did on the Mario character. Which, by the way, if you want to see how I made the Mario character, check out the other video where I focused just on that. Even though you couldn't even see the gills of the mushrooms in the shot, I knew they should be there to add whatever subtle indirect reflections they would add in the original shot. However, I had no reason to focus on their details this much. But at this point, I'm just doing it for fun and practice. Then of course I took all the caps to Substance Painter and created the color texture. As you can see in the reference, the edges have this orange fade to them and the red has these kind of purple variations to it, which I didn't really add here, but I added it later. Then I also made a cap model without spots modeled into it and I just created the spots using a texture since I knew a lot of the mushrooms will be really small and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference so there's no need for all those extra polygons. 
Then I took the rigged model I made in the last video and posed it as it is in the shot. Only now it became really obvious to me that I should have made his belly much bigger and more round, but I definitely wasn't going to re-sculpt and re-rig the whole thing. I just imported the pose model into ZBrush and fixed up a bunch of distortions and just inflated his belly a little bit. I didn't want to spend too much time adding wrinkle detail since he's kind of small in the shot, but honestly I should have. After I rendered, I noticed he was lacking some detail, but not enough where I felt necessary to go back to it. If you enjoyed this content, feel free to support on Patreon where you can find these project files as well as other cool perks, but mostly help me make more and better content for y'all. And I totally understand that everyone can support that way and that's okay, even subscribing and engaging with the content really helps the channel or even following me on Instagram at ojang or the channel at brand new plastic. Either way, I really appreciate you. Then I started composing the shot in cinema using the original frame on a foreground object with low opacity to match it as much as I could. And of course our good old bridge for some mossy rock models, grass texture for the ground, as well as grass, clover and flower models to scatter on the ground. And then I set the sunlight and placed the mushrooms in a way that casts the shadows as close to the original shot as I could. For the mushroom textures, I used the albedo texture I painted, uh, normal and displacement maps from ZBrush. And the roughness imperfection maps, I created procedurally mixing noises. Much quicker and easier than hand painting them. Sometimes I change the white balance in the settings to quickly color shift the whole thing so I can get a better idea of how it would look after color grading. Just need to remember to change it back before rendering, I think. Then I started populating the scene with the smallest mushrooms using the place tool, which is super handy to just move and scale objects around on a surface. For the grass and clover, I used the octane scatter and just painted a vertex map to control exactly where they would scatter. I didn't want them to scatter under his body and um, intersect too much with the rocks and the mushrooms. Then for the flowers, I used a scatter pen that allowed me to simply paint on the ground where I wanted the models to scatter, so that allowed for maximum control. And I went in Photoshop and altered the colors of the flowers a bit to further match with the original shot.
And then I just made some last adjustments, added a fog object to try and get those visible light rays from the original shot, which didn't really work. And then rendered and color graded in After Effects. I thought I was done, but then I found a 4K footage of the same shot I was going for and realized how much more detail there is in the original shot. I was just dumb enough to look at a low res image. So I went back to ZBrush and tried to manually add all the tiny bump details on the mushroom caps. But I realized it was just not worth to do it for all the mushrooms. Those wrinkles on the sides of the spots you barely notice and all the bumps and scratches on the caps I can either add procedurally or paint them in substance. So that's what I ended up doing. Some bumps were procedural, just mixing noises and blending them together using a composite texture node and some I painted in substance. And that's the final render. This was much easier than I thought it would be, probably because I already had Mario modeled and textured, so the majority of the work went on creating the mushrooms and just creating the scene, which was pretty straightforward. But I'm super, super happy with the results. That's it. If you have any recommendations for a shot to recreate, let me know in the comments. Subscribe, like, share, check out the procedural fabric packs on my Gumroad, check out the enamel pins, consider Patreon or membership, and a green one up to all my number one patrons and members you see on the screen right now. I love you. Have a great day. Peace.